Vai xixi mo tsa ma u vanda. Yo. Yo. Tensions are brewing between e-hailing operators and taxi drivers in Soweto. Several e-hailing motor vehicles were vandalized in satellite at the Maponya Mall last week Friday. And one more car was torched at the Proteat Land Mall on Monday night. Now amid the clashes between the trans you know the two transport businesses lives are put at risk while some are even lost. Bahai, so good evening. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we unpack uh, the root cause of constant clashes between taxi drivers and e-hailing operators in a bid to get possible solutions to the matter that has been ongoing for years. Joining us in studio via Zoom to help us with the conversation is Melitemba Mguni, who is the Secretary of the E-Hailing Partners Council and the spokesperson of the South African National Taxi Council, that's Machikidi Rebecca Pala, joining us via Zoom there. Uh, Ms. Mguni and Ms. Pala, uh, good evening. Welcome to Soweto Today. Uh, good evening, Tabo, and uh, to the viewers. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Tabo. Good evening to you and to your viewers. Much appreciated. Uh, you know, I want us to start with you, Mr. Mguni, just to look at, uh, you know, um, understand actually the e-hailing industry uh, because, you know, it's not more of a traditional mode of transport that uh, we've been used to as a country back in the days. Maybe just to tell people, you know, our viewers, what kind of services that you guys offer and what is e-hailing services? Um, e-hailing, I would say it's an advanced um, service of meter taxis where it's utilized to connect um, passengers and uh, operators. So what happens is that you connect with the operator or us as the service providers through the upload the app on your phone. You upload your details to create a profile, and then afterwards you are able to request. And uh, the payment method it's either via card, your your bank card, or a cash transaction. Um, and then when you request, you are able to see the driver who's going to be driving you, the vehicle that uh, they're going to be driving you with, the registration number, you, you upload your destination, you see the driver as they approach you, you are able to trace it on your phone until they arrive. And then once they start, it also gives you again the map where it's taking you to. and. Some of the security measures with um, other platforms like Uber, you are able to share your trip with your family or friends um, for them to be able to see how far are you, if you are going to them, they're able to check that trip until you get to the destination. Mm. Uh, you know, Mr. Mkudi, I, I'm very interested in finding out exactly, you know, this fallout that, uh, you know, e-hailing drivers have been having with meter taxis and also uh, the issues that are happening between you guys and the taxi industry also. Uh, maybe if you can just uh, give us a sense of what are the underlying issues that you're having within the industry itself. Um, look, there have always been issues. Um, mainly they have been between ourselves and the meter taxis because they were traditionally um, using um, either just a physical approach to say you go to a meter taxis or you call them. Um, so they, they have been our direct competitors who have been aggrieved with us. And there's been a very much tension, lives were lost when they fought us. However, it has escalated to the minibus taxis who have also come into the space who are not happy with uh, some of our operations and how we operate. Um, they've raised a number of issues, some that are founded, some that are not. There's issue of regulation uh, between the two, where they are saying, look, we are regulated. There's expectations for us to comply with. We don't feel that's the same with e-hailing. And they are aggrieved when it comes to that. However, we've also had issues whereby if a space is not regulated, there are elements that are going to take advantage of it. We've got people that masquerade as as uh, as, as e-hailing drivers when they are not. Same applies to the passengers. We've got people that masquerade as e-hailing passengers when they are not. 
then they commit crimes. And those are setting us up with the minibus taxes because these people are now operating outside the app. I explained how you connect with e hailing We use the app for our, uh, our services. Now, you've got a situation where these um, uh, unlawful e hailings e-hailers approach people, start encroaching. So that space is for meter taxes and the minibus taxes. So now you've got the situation where the taxes have got a tax at the range, maybe within the mall or just outside the mall. Um, while this child has just finished shopping, is going to the tax rank, then there's someone who approaches them and say, no, come to my side, I'm going to check you home. Mr. So Mugini, those have set us up uh, mm. for the clashes. Mm. And is, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Rebecca, let me bring you into this conversation. Um, the taxi industry has been in existence for many years and people have relied on them and used them to travel to different places. Uh, you know, there's always been clashes between you guys um, as the taxi industry, particularly with these meter taxis. There hasn't been, you know, a space whereby uh, you guys can be able to operate. We saw what happened in Maponyamo. Maybe let me just get your reaction because there are allegations that, uh, in fact, taxi, uh, the taxi industry is the one that's involved to on what happened uh, there in Maponya and Proteat land. Dr. went to your viewers. We, as Santaco, want to first send our deepest apologies to the commuters of public transport who have been at the receiving end of the unfortunate incidents that have happened of late, particularly in Soweto, we find that it is very unfortunate and passengers should not then be subjected to such violence when there are unfortunate happenings that are happening to us as an industry. Be that as it may, we also appreciate the reality that these cases that we are talking about in particular are now subject of police investigations. And that essentially tells you that at this point, unless stated by law enforcement, it is not known who the suspects are. Mm. And, and so we are not going to particularly partake in any discussion that seeks to ask if we or our members were involved in that particular incident. And so we want to sort of give that particular context. That having been said, to appreciate what my colleague from the e-hailing sector has already alluded to, the reality of the matter is that we've been having challenges as colleagues of an integrated public transport sector in that, unfortunately, the National Land Transport Act in its current form mm. does not make mention and appreciation of the reality of the introduction of these e-hailing sectors who then operate um, within the meter taxi industry, as an ex-Mr. Mbuni has said. And so the question of jurisdiction and has been very tricky to understand in that we don't know who is supposed to operate until where. And that, as a result, often leads to there being clashes between our soldiers on the ground, which happens to be the drivers. It is very unfortunate. Our biggest concern is with government to say how much more cars should be destroyed, how much more lives should be lost before they fully regulate this industry. So we all understand our jurisdictions because it boils down to that. So for us, we are not necessarily calling our colleagues from the e-hailing sector or any other part of public transport as enemies. And we're not fighting there. We want government to come to the party with a sense of urgency and help us resolve so we can all operate on an equal footing. Rebecca, I want us to just, uh, you know, um, park it there because I want us to get into particularly the regulation part of, uh, you know, the, 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 this whole industry itself because it seems like, uh, you know, there's people are not finding each other, particularly when some people are not regulated. But I want us to look at uh, maybe what needs to be done just after the quick ad break. Let's take a quick breather. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Following the violent clashes we have seen unfold between the taxi drivers and the e-hailing drivers, 
for the past few days in Soweto. The Gauteng Department of Transport met with the two transport businesses earlier today to find a way forward on the ongoing feud. If you're just tuning in, we are joined in studio via Zoom. That's uh, Melita Mgun, who is the Secretary of the E-Hailing Partners Council, as well as Machigidi Pala, who is the spokesperson of the South African National Taxi Council. And we are talking about the continuous feud between uh, both, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the industry and the e-hailing services. Uh, Machigidi, let me just uh, go to you. Uh, you know, uh, you were talking about the issues of um, regulations, uh, particularly, you know, within the space of the taxi business. Uh, the issue of the routes seems to be a major problem. Uh, because one thing that I know, as you said, that um, you know, if you are traveling on national roads or certain routes, um, there is provision by the National Land uh, you know, Transport Act. You know, if you are operating on the road, you need to have a permit and stuff. So the issue of uh, you know, permit seems to be a major crisis, particularly between the two. Uh, because obviously with the taxi industry, there are certain routes that you are allocated by a government and then uh, you know, when you start seeing people using those routes, then in those clashes ensue, particularly in your industry itself, because we're seeing people fighting for those routes. Uh, what needs to be done in terms of regulations? What, I mean, are there any talks that are happening uh, between you and government, particularly in this aspect? In terms of whether there are talks that are happening, Happening between us and government, we've had uh, multiple talks. Currently, government has a bill that uh, particularly talks to the issue such as that of jurisdiction, which for us in the minibus industry will call routes, and in the meter taxi industry, they talk about meters. Uh, that's that's generally how it's it's um, regarded. So we've been in talks, we continue to be in talks with them. The bill that we're making reference to has been concluded back when Minister Mbalula was still in office. They are now currently with public comments. That particular bill fully appreciates what needs to be done as having been submitted to by ourselves and, and all other affected um, um, stakeholders with regards to this particular matter. What we are saying is that with us as the minibus industry and the meter taxi industry, if I should also explain there that the meter industry is not operated into Santaco, so we've got Santaco meter taxis. So what we now have as a reality is that for us as, as minibus taxi industries, if one were to look at it from there, we understand our, very well our jurisdiction in the form of the routes that you've spoken about. What becomes confusing is when now we have colleagues coming into the market, operating on those routes that we've known to have been allocated to us, when it was never fully explained to us and there was never a law that was passed by parliament and then in extension passed into by a president, a sitting president. And so it looks as though they are essentially infiltrating a market and operating illegally. And that's why we're saying that bill needs to be concluded and that act then needs to be amended. I mean, I understand the bill, uh, Machikidi, but you know, your members have been so intolerant on the roads, uh, you know, particularly when these instances are happening. We are seeing it on a daily basis. It's either, you know, people would come out and would stop people and would take them out of those vehicles, you know, saying that uh, in fact they should be getting into taxis, not meter taxis. We see it happening in townships whereby, you know, taxi drivers would go and take out someone at the back seat saying that uh, actually this person needs to be in a taxi. However, that person might be a family member of the person who's driving the car. And Tabo, look, we need to, as Santapo, appreciate that those have been the unfortunate acts that have come out of people who we call to be our members. Criminality in the form of some of the acts that I would imagine yourself have reported about previously where taxi drivers have violently, forcefully taken people out of vehicles. We do not promote that. We have never and continue to say people should not take matters into their own hands. We still reiterate our position to say as and when a member is found to be acting in that way, members of the public 
are really urged to consult with law enforcement and ensure that these people are brought to book because we continuously through our associations urge our drivers to understand that though there is frustration yes because we have people who are operating on our routes when we've never formally been informed of their existence and what the barriers are as a stakeholder who's been the longest serving in the public transport realm we are not going to justify now violating fellow south africans on the road so we apologize for such acts as and when they happen they are very unfortunate they are not necessarily that which we tell our members to do they are as a result of this confusion that's persisting not to say to our and to your viewers that we're justifying violence let me it bring is an in, end result that's very unfortunate yes yeah i understand what you're saying let me bring in uh, you know militamba into this discussion uh, militamba we know that uh, you know you've been accused uh, as e-hailing drivers of not following proper procedures, particularly, you know, what, what certain routes that are given there. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe you can try to explain to us, uh, you know, the instances whereby you guys are given certain routes or where you should operate. Uh, how does it normally work? And also, you know, some of the challenges that you're having with a particular taxi industry in terms of the routes that you're supposed to use. Um, the issue of routes shouldn't be um, even a, a concern between our service and that of the minibus taxis because that's not how we operate. Neither has it ever been an issue between them and the meter taxis because that's not how they operate. So if you look at the taxis, a taxi has got a route to say this one operates from either pre-taxi rank to Soweto and it belongs to that route. When it's given an operating license, it's based on that route to say, I apply for my taxi, which operates on this route. When it comes to meter taxis, there's what is called a holding bay, which is a starting point. So when you apply, you say, look, I operate at uh, Santing uh, uh, um, Station. Because you operate from there, you get a recommendation from your association. Then you are given an operating license that says you can go anyway in the province um, but your starting point is from the car train station so what you can do as a meter text is that you can pick up from that station you can drop off anywhere and you can pick up any other place as long as it's a pre-arranged trip so what you can't do is to pick like a taxi where you just pick a person on the side that's what we have also mentioned that we are against it so if you look at e-hailing we don't have a starting point and they, like I said, my, my colleague will testify to, to this because I believe she should be aware of this. There is a practice not that comes as an interim regulations, which then allows the police, the provincial regulation uh, regulatory entities to guide on what, on how operations to, should happen. So when it comes to e-hailing, there is no starting point compared to the meter taxes because all of the trips are pre-arranged. All the trips are requested through the apps. So mm -hmm. what happens is that we can pick anywhere, we can drop anywhere, as long as the trip is pre-arranged. So the issue is when you start having e-hailers who are picking people, whether on the side of the roads or who are picking people at mall or encroaching and saying, no, Tavisho, come to my car. That's where the issues comes in, mm -hmm. not the issue of routes. We are allowed to operate from any road. Let us take a quick short breather after the ad break. We will hear how customers are being affected by this feud and look at the possible solutions from both our guests. So do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We have reached the last segment of the show and we're still talking about the root cause of the feud between e-hailing services and the Taxi Association. We're still talking to Melitemba Mguni, who is the Secretary of the E-Hailing Partners Council, as well as Machikidi Pala, who is the spokesperson for the South African National um, Taxi Council. They're joining us uh, via Zoom. Just before we can conclude our conversation, uh, Machikidi and uh, Melitemba, I want us to just uh, listen to some of uh, the commuters on what they're saying. This has impacted and impacted them. Let's take a look. 
I think people have a choice. I prefer to use Uber Bolt. At my convenience, if it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I want to be comfortable. Yes, I can always just maneuver around during the daytime, but taxis are not able to do that for me. So it's not really at my convenience. But what happened here last week is just so shocking. I just think that people have a choice and they should just leave the e-hailing system, you know, because it's two different, it's just transportation at the end of the day. It takes a big lot of and we are it's been, it's month end now. So it's taking you closer, because taking you closer, it takes you to be able to walk about 10 to 15 minutes. Yes, so in a thing a pair and in doya being a thing a pair as as good to a pair and but in a thing about conjure um to plan be minister of transport as a mutter no no takes because it's here but in a lava band. Nasab Sugama takes away a web soak. Machikidi and uh, I mean, Militemba, you've heard what uh, some of the customers are saying. I think it's just the issue of coexistence and comfortability. Maybe there are plans in place from both of you on how you can coexist. Let me start with you, uh, Militemba. Um, definitely, there should be coexistence because at the end of the day, the consumer suffers and we should be able to provide services, both ourselves, the minibus taxis and all other uh, our counterparts. Look, on the way forward, um, I would agree with uh, one of the viewers. We definitely have to sit and, and talk on the way forward as counterparts. And on our side, we had been given a task by the Santaco leadership to say, look, you need to formalize yourself um, so that we are able to have concrete resolutions on whatever agreements that we have. And we've done so on our side. And uh, on our last meeting, we agreed for a, a workshop meeting. And we are pending that. We've written to Santaco about two, three weeks ago. Um, we're waiting for, for a response as to when we can have a, a, a workshop, a, a meeting, where we iron out how we can go about this. Because at the center of this, we've complained about regulation. Government is the one that regulates. But both me and you can agree that government is lacking on a number of issues. And mm -hmm. operators, as service providers, we need to take the initiative ourselves to see how we can move and move forward. And we can uh, rob in government on the agreements that we have, because if we wait for government, unfortunately, we will continue having black on black violence, losing a lot of lives like we've done already, and uh, inconveniencing. Uh, Temba, let me just bring in uh, um, Machigiri here, just in the interest of time. Uh, you know, uh, Machigiri, in brief, um, coexistence seems to be, you know, the main word. Um, uh, we know that uh, obviously these e-hailing um, companies, you know, are owned by external uh, companies from the U.S. You know, obviously the issue of accountability somewhere, somehow, is is is, is shaky. Um, what should be the way forward? You heard what the the customers are saying. I wish to first reiterate to our customers, we are very sorry that they're at the receiving end of these disagreements that we're having, and again to echo. Well, But my colleague has already said we see that we are an integrated transport sector. We respect that uh, commuters have different preferences and they have a right to choice. And so we fully are appreciative of all of those realities. We also appreciate that we will continuously converse. And like Umali Temba said, we are already talking as colleagues. Um, we will obviously over when all is said and done, need that rubber stamp by government. And I don't want us to leave government on the sidelines and say, because they are struggling in a number of things, then we mm -hmm. should only talk at that. Because unfortunately, for as long as there's no regulated framework, we will always have these tips that sort of uh, put us against each, each other. And so we need to also really push for government to do right by us. But truly, we, we appreciate the integrated nature and we find it very unfortunate that it often boils down to violence. It should never be that way.
Let me thank uh, both of you for making the time and joining us on this show tonight. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for having us. That was uh, Melitemba Mguni, who is the Secretary of the E-Hailing Partners Council, as well as Machikidi Rebecca Pala, who is the spokesperson of the South African National Taxi Council, talking to us about the never-ending tensions between the taxi operators and e-hailing drivers. We also heard from commuters who clearly state how badly this feud is affecting them. Something clearly needs to be done in this regard. Well, that's all how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this uh, conversation by simply sending us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Today. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Bahai Tsuridi Rile Holekani from myself and the rest of the team. I'm Tabo Molokwani and good night.